day and good holy kids how are you today okay then that's great I am your teacher Pearl and I am going to tell you a fairy tale story entitled little red cap is there any one of you here have heard this story okay then allow me to tell you the story of this little red cap and how does a fox eat her with her grandmother are you ready to listen Okay, then let us start. Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone in the village who looked at her, but most of all by her grandmother, and there was nothing that she would not have given to the child. Once she gave her a little cap of red velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else. So she was always called Little Red Cap. One day, her mother said to her, Come, little red cap, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to grandmother. She is ill and weak, and they will do her good. Set out before it gets hot, and when you are going, walk nicely and quietly and do not run off the path. Or you may fall and break the bottle, and then your grandmother will get nothing. And when you go into her room, don't forget to say good morning and don't peep into every corner before you do it. I will take great care, said Little Red Cat to her mother and gave her hand on it. The grandmother lived out in the wood half a league from the village. And just as Little Red Cat entered into the wood, a wolf met her. Red Cap did not know what a wicked creature he was and was not all afraid of him. Good day, little Red Cap, said he. Thank you, kindly wolf. Whither away so early, little Red Cap? To my grandmother's. What have you got into your apron? Cake and wine. Yesterday was a baking day, so poor sick grandmother is to have something good to make her stronger. Where does your grandmother live, little red cap? A good quarter of a league farther on in the wood. Her house stands under the three large oak trees. The nut trees are just below. You surely must know it, replied little red cap. Okay now, what do you think that a wolf would do? Okay, then let us figure it out. The wolf thought to himself, What a tender young creature. What a nice plump mouthful she. She will be better to eat than the old woman. I must act craftily so as to catch both. So he walked for a short time to the side of Little Red Cap and then he said, See Little Red Cap, how pretty the flowers are about here. Why don't you look around? I believe too that you do not hear how sweet little little birds are singing. You walk gravely along as if you were going to school while everything else out here in the woods is merry. Little Red Cap raised her eyes and when she saw the sunbeams dancing here and wind through the trees, the pretty flowers growing everywhere. She thought, Suppose I take grandmother a fresh nosegay that would please her too. It is so early in the day that I shall still get there in good time. And so she ran from the path into the wood to look for flowers. And whenever she had picked one, she fancied that she saw a still prettier on farther one and ran after it, and so got deeper and deeper into the woods. Meanwhile, the wolf ran straight to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Who is there? Little Red Cap, replied the wolf. She is bringing cake and wine. Open the door. Lift the latch, called out the grandmother. I am too weak and cannot get up. Now, what do you think does the wolf will do inside the house of the little red cub's grandmother? Okay, then listen carefully. 
the wolf lifted the latch. The door sprang open and without saying a word, he went straight to grandmother's bed and devoured her. The wolf lifted the latch, the door sprang open and without saying a word, he went straight to grandmother's bed and devoured her. Then he put on her clothes, dressed himself in her cup, laid himself in a bed, drew of the curtains. Okay, so what do you think that the wolf dressed himself like grandmothers? Very good. Now, Little Red Cap, however, had been running about picking flowers. And when she had gathered so many that she could carry no more, then she remembered her grandmother and set out on the way to her. She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open. And when she went into the room, she had such a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today. And at others time, I like being with grandmother so much. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. So she went into the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her cap pulled far over her face and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, she said, what a big ears you have. The better to eat you with, my child, was the reply. But, grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said. The better to see you with, my dear. But, grandmother, what large hands you have the better to hug you with oh but grandmother what a terrible big mouth you have the better to eat you with and scarcely had the wolf said this than with the bound that he was out of bed and swallowed up little red cap now is grandmother and little red cap are dead well Let's figure it out. Now, is the grandmother and little red cup are already dead? Well, let's figure it out. When the wolf had appeased his appetite, he lay down again in the bed, fell asleep, and began to snore very loudly. The huntsman was just passing the house and thought to himself, how the old woman is snoring. I must just see if she wants anything. I must see if she wants anything. So he went into the room and when he came into the bed, he saw that the wolf was lying in it. What do you think the huntsman will do to the sleeping wolf? Okay then, let me continue. Do I find you here, old sinner, said he. I have long sought you. Then just as he was going to fire at him, it occurred to him that the wolf might have devoured the grandmother and she might still be saved. So he did not fire but took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the stomach of the sleeping wolf. When he made two snips, he saw... Okay, wait. What do you think the huntsman saw inside the stomach of the wolf? Very good. Now the little red cap is shiny brightly. And then he made two snips more and then the little girl sprang out crying. Ah, how frightened I have been. How dark it was inside the wolf. And after the age, a grandmother came out alive also but scarcely able to breathe. Red Cap, however, quickly fetched great stones with which they filled the wolf's belly. And when he awoke, he wanted to run away, but the stones were so heavy that he collapsed at once and fell dead. Then all three were delighted. The huntsman drew up the wolf's skin and went home with it. The grandmother ate up the cake and drank the wine which Red Cap had brought and revived but Red Cup had thought to herself 
As long as I live, I will never by myself leave the path to ruin into the wood when my mother has forbidden me to do so. And that's the end of the story of the Little Red Cap. Now, what is the lesson that you've learned in the Little Red Cap story? Okay, so you should never talk to strangers, for if you do so, that animal, just like the fox, or person may harm you just like what little red cat had experienced. That is the importance of obeying your parents and remember that mother knows best. Thank you children, happy learning and I'll tell you another story again and next time. God bless you all again. Don't you ever talk to strangers. Good holy, bye bye.